Okay. All right. So let's count down again. Three, two, one. Uh, Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to face mute because I'm having dinner here. <laughs> So should we get going? We have a full agenda today, so I think we should just start because we have loads of things to talk about. Um, so hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Sumum community meeting. We did not have a meeting last um, last Monday because loads of people were away um, and it felt that it would be like only two people uh, from the staff in the meeting, so it really didn't make sense. Uh, so we'll try to cover everything um, in this meeting. So let's try to let's start by uh, looking at the previous action items. Uh, the first one was for myself to look into the meet the team page uh, to include contributors. So there was a discussion about this on the contributor forums. We have the link there. Uh, Alice posted it um, about how this meet the team should look like. Um, I have made a few suggestions there, um, and you can check them out, and if you have any comments, please do write, um, if you have any other suggestions on how uh, this should work. So basically my suggestion is that we should remove um, all the um, bios, like the descriptions that we have for ourselves, and just leave our names with the basically the project that we are working on, so that people know um, who is doing what? This is for staff, and then everybody else will just we will uh, list people by groups, and then the uh, people in those groups. So we'll basically um, list the major groups or major projects that uh, are going on, and then everybody um, attached to that project there, and then it will be basically our responsibility for everybody to actually update our profiles, including our bios and our contact details and everything else, um, so that people know who we are. Uh, and this should leave a space for also contributors to be on the page and not just like a big sumo staff thing and then nobody else. Um, so yeah, everything is that in that conversation on the contributor forums, um, so please to join the conversation if you have any other suggestions. Um, Alice, I'm looking forward to hearing from you what you think about this. Um, and yeah, please let me know. Uh, okay, moving on. Next one is update on the bug. Kadir. Give me a, a second. <laughs> yeah, with, the, with your name on it. Oh yeah, uh, actually we uh, we looked into this, and uh, as, as you know, we have been pushing this off from sprint to sprint because we had a lack of time. But finally, now in this sprint, we will actually get to it. So uh, this is uh, already in the current sprint, and we will be finishing this by uh, Tuesday next week, uh, latest. So um, that's, that's all I have about that right now. If there are questions about this, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, and then next one is Vito getting access to VPN reporting that works for you. I'm working with Vito. Um, we, we at least have confirmed that he has actually access to VPN with his LDAP credentials. Uh, it's, it's proving to be uh, somewhat difficult to do this remote, um, but I'll, be con I'll continue to work with him. Uh, we will get him online eventually. We'll get him access to our uh, log so he can work with us on analyzing them. Um, yeah, so I took that over. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, if anybody has like comments or questions, please interrupt me. I will be quite fast because there are loads of things to talk about, but just say, hey, stop, shut up. Uh, okay, next one, Roland to update form threads, Persona VS themes. I went bananas and forgot about this one. I will do this. Okay. Roland will do this this week. Hey, Roland, did we get an article about the themes? I thought we were writing one with the technical writing program. No, remember I pinged you because the I um, I thought the, the person who said they would do that, they they disappeared. And, and I, I said, remember, ping that guy, Tom, who had already written a bunch of... Uh, mobile articles. I sent you an email about it. Okay. I'll, I'll go find it. 
and resend it. Ooh. Back Sorry, guys. Yes. That's that's my Firefox OS device. I don't know how to mute it. <laughs> Sorry. How do you mute the Firefox device? Firefox OS device. Okay. Cool. Uh, next one is e byte report. Hold back down the power button and select oh, silence incoming calls. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you. Have you documented that? <laughs> I'm pretty well, sure it's pretty in neat. the right team if you have any questions about how to use Firefox OS devices. I, I think that one is documented. I'm pretty sure I saw that one. Nice. All right. Uh, next topic, e byte report back on the new l 10 n KPI. I always love to say this, read the notes. Uh, there's a thread going on <laughs> for that. <laughs> so please just go there and it's really give your long. opinions. Yeah. So there's a discussion there. Please go there and check it out if you have any interest in this. Please, um, yes. Please. Next one, still do e by look into the forum and KPI and see if the redesign has an impact. Uh, again, read the notes. Uh, not, not, nothing seems to be wrong. It, just, it seems that it's fluctuating. There are a couple of theories, but hard to validate. Uh, just take a look to the etherpad and just leave your comments and we can explore further. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, next topic was Ralph and Rosanna post photos and tags for campus party. Um, Rosanna is away. I don't know about Ralph. I think he's also away. Uh, okay. I'm here. So oh, yeah. I, have, oh, I do sorry. have um, a whole bunch of photos on my Flickr account, and I'll go ahead and share that on the Etherpad. And there's there's a uh, Probably about just a handful of more photos that I still need to upload, but the great majority of them is in there, uh, including some of the speakers and also the Firefox that made an appearance. Wow. Cool. Uh, if you could just link that uh, here so people see. Thanks. Right. And then everyone go to the four months of 10 questions. That was a um, long time ago. Yes, we're doing, doing well with the forum. We're constantly above 90% of questions answered. So thanks everybody who's participating. Um, but we're still not 100% every day. So it would be great if we could do more. So more questions, more answers, come on. All right, moving on. Some more development updates. I guess that's it here. All right, let me give the update on that. So we are currently in the fourth sprint, and if you want to see the details of that sprint, I'm always linking to uh, the Scrumbox Scrum page, uh, which lists every single bug that we're working on in detail, and you know you can see which ones are already done and which ones um, that people assigned to them. Uh, so in the fourth sprint, what we focused on is finishing up the work on localized forums, uh, making sure that all of that um, is ready uh, to go online. Um, and besides that, uh, so that, that's taking actually less than 75% of our time. So this time, we also wanted to get to a number of those uh, smaller issues that we've been pushing from sprint to sprint because there was just no time to get to them. Um, so that's the reason why you're seeing the uh, committee, um, uh, the, the attachment uh, of, of images to, um, to discussion forums, for example, and um, a lot of uh, smaller issues that we that have been plaguing us for quite some time uh, did actually land or are going to land in this uh, sprint. So we wanted to focus uh, on the on the number of um, paper cuts and uh, issues that have been that we have been pushing off. Um, so hopefully everyone will be very happy to see them uh, going in into this sprint. Uh, that's the first sprint. Uh, and that's in progress this week. Excellent. Uh, any questions about that? Take one, take two. No? Okay. Uh, John99 said that he added an article in Roundtable, so I guess we'll discuss that when we reach the Roundtable. Um, UX, nothing for uh, UX. I 
Well, I should update you, X. We are currently, uh, Brahm is currently working on iterations of um, the focus and refine feature. Uh, we had a number of findings there uh, that you can also follow in the bug uh, that I should post in here. But essentially, uh, we found we we we've uh, did some testing on the focus and refine feature. We got to some uh, con uh, conclusions. Uh, there were some interesting findings, and now we're looking into uh, refining the focus and refine feature. <laughs> so um, that's what's currently going on. Okay. Any questions for Kadir? <clears throat> no. Okay. All right, we can move then to roundtable. Um, the first topic is that, <laughs> heads up that this meeting will be long. So just in case you didn't realize that, this meeting will be long. Um, <laughs> David has some right. people to introduce. Yeah, so I just uh, updated. So before I start, Hermina, have you signed the, the, the contract? Yes, I did. <laughs> You did. All right. Then, then I can say these things without feeling worried. So we have two new faces in this uh, meeting, as you, you guys can see. The, the first person is Patrick, Patrick McLeod, who uh, joined us actually last week, last Tuesday, and he's our uh, help desk support manager. And uh, so Patrick will, actually he started last week and he, he was worked in the San Francisco office for four days. Now he's based in Seattle, he will be working from home, and he will be driving basically all of our help desk related responsibilities around the uh, Firefox OS launch. Um, but he will also be driving strategy for uh, the apps and marketplace support. So there's a bunch of stuff there that is very related to help desk. And uh, Patrick has a ton of experience in that field too. So he's come from Valve, which some people may know of, some, some people won't, but it's, um, it's a pretty awesome software, or I should say game, Game uh, developer. Game, yeah, game developer and game publisher. Um, they have both arms. Right. So Half-Life, Counter-Strike, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, deadly stuff. <laughs> it's, a, it's about killing people. If you Portal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's that? Portal. Portal. That one's my favorite. Portal. No, no killing. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, there's course, killing I'm, cubes in Portal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm too old for this, so I only remember Half-Life, but. Um, anyway, so so he so he has actually a lot of experience working with uh, the the game gaming industry type of you know marketplace that they run, um, which is called Steam. <clears throat> so uh, all of his experience will come in handy, and uh, we're very excited to have you on board, Patrick. And so welcome. Thanks, the sir. the other person that is on this call is Hermina, who is. Actually, you know, she, she hasn't joined us yet, but she will join us eventually in May uh, when she has successfully relocated to Paris. Right now she's in Dublin, I think, correct? Right. So I didn't prepare this, Hermina, but, but uh, so she will be the, the Firefox uh, OS support strategy lead, and she will work alongside with uh, Michelle and help define our strategies for the numerous partnerships that we're um, signing around the world for Firefox OS. And I'm sure you guys have followed the news this week, so you know roughly what it's about. That, you know, there's a lot of lot of stuff that we need to to figure out there. Um, so, so uh, you know, between the two of you, I feel super super excited about uh, where this team is going and the the ton of experience that we're bringing to the team, uh, in addition to the kick-ass team that we already have. So, welcome to both. And of course, Hermina, she's not formally joining until May. So this consider this volunteer time and we we thank you for that <laughs> unofficial time unofficial time yeah we all have that actually so anyway so all good news the other thing i had another roundtable item which is the related to the sumo the, the section of this meeting i'm wondering if should that be moved down not a or or is rick normally joining this meeting i forget Oh, uh, there are Because remember, we used to have it at the top just because Ricky, you know, he wanted to be able to join and then, but then he, uh, so that he could sort of <laughs> skip the rest of the meeting if he didn't, didn't want to follow through. But I, I haven't seen him join in the last few weeks, so I'm wondering if we should just move it down. Uh, usually Ricky actually takes part in these. Uh, it's just that the last few weeks he has been on PTO and he just came yeah. back today. So I'm not sure maybe he didn't have, um, was right. still trying to get up or something. 
in that case, let's uh, keep it the way it is. Thanks. Cool. All right. Thanks, David. Great updates. Um, a new topic added a new discussion item. Uh, Netherpad for feedback regarding it. Okay, so I had a look at this. Uh, this is basically set up wanting to talk about the idea of adding a meet the contributors page uh, to Sumo. This is related to the meet the team page that I was talking about before. So set up, I'm not sure if you're online or not. So right now we are concentrating on redesigning the meet the team page. So we will do that. They won't, uh, it's not necessary to have a meet the contributors page because basically everything will be in the meet the team page as contributors are also the team. So we're trying to actually incorporate everything there. So we don't have like a lot of pages uh, around that. So if um, you want to update your profile, that would be great. Just do it on the normal profile, like the Sumo profile, and then um, everything will be linked from the middle team page. Okay. Uh, another topic, feedback on how you felt the mobile test they went. So, and there's an either pad for it. So if you want to have a look at that, please do. Um, you have the either pad there, so you can just comment on it. Uh, yes? One thing. Yeah. Given that you, you started this roundtable section saying that this meeting will be long and that we have a lot of things to talk about, uh, it just occurred to me that many of these items that are in the roundtable aren't really something that we need to discuss in this meeting. It's something that would probably be better to take offline and, and communicate in the contributor forum. So I wonder if we, may, I think we are, or at least we did, use, we have this template for how to make a decision, but maybe we need to make it clearer that, that uh, sorry, for, for having discussion, but maybe we can make it somehow clearer that some things just are better discussed in the, con in the contributor forum rather than you know, making sure that we talk about it. It's there at the top of the section. There's a link. Yeah. There. I don't know. I mean, maybe we can just add it in actually verbatim in the round table section or something to make it clear. I don't know. I mean, just a, like the, the top rules or something. Because it feels like this, you know, feedback on how it went. That's something that, that is not really a discussion. It's more of a pointer. So we don't mm -hmm. actually have to talk about it, if that makes sense. Yeah. We can make it make that a bit more clear. Oh, in the beginning so, I mean, the I guess it's also, uh, you know, it's something for, for in this case, Satav and, and Andrew. I don't know if there are more people here. I, I, that, that's all I see so far is that think about that when you're adding topics to this to this um, roundtable section. That, is this something that actually requires discussion with the whole team? Or is it just a pointer to something? Uh, or something that you need to discuss with one or two people? If that's the case, then it's probably probably doesn't have to be in the roundtable section of this meeting because this meeting you know involves everyone so it takes a lot of time yeah I'll shut up now <laughs> okay thank you um, okay next topics again Sadav about uh, possible price for a com I'm not sure what that is a best KB articles answer most forum post designer handbook okay so these are a few things that, as David said, we can discuss it on the contributor forum better, uh, especially if like, you guys are not online. I mean, you're not in the call right now. So if you could just start a topic about this and then we can follow up there, that would be great. Um, it would be really helpful and it will take less time than trying to figure out what uh, the idea is about. Uh, so we'll just move on. Uh, many come to the forum frustrated. Do we have a group to reassure users? Something like an assurance team. Okay. So again, I'm not sure exactly what the topic is. Um, so we would need more details about this. What exactly do we want to do? So Andrew, if you could give more details, that would be great. Uh, so we can actually start a discussion around this. Thank you. But we don't have a team, uh, just to no, answer that question. Don't. Yeah. Uh, OK. Next topic, can eBuy help with sync issues that come up daily on the support forum, please? Andrew. eBuy? Did he just drop off?
I think he just dropped off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. if I... If, I'm when, here, sorry, I, I was okay. mute and face mute because I have a time. Uh, yes, I can say yes. Uh, my fault for not having checked into this. I thought that there was... I mean, usually other people answer those questions too, but if there is anything in particular, I can, I can look into it. And if anyone has a difficulty, you speak me. Great. Okay, there are some, some updates in this. I'm, I'm going to use it as a, as a platform too. Uh, Sync is not being developed anymore. So new features, new things are not going to happen. Uh, and the whole future of syncing your Firefox is going to be moved to a new project that is called Pickle. You will start listening or uh, uh, hearing about it uh, soon. If you are curious about it, go to the identity mailing list. That's where it's happening. Um, Pickle stands for profile in the cloud. So persona integrated with powers, password manager with profiles, etc. And that's going to be the new new version of uh, Sync. It's still really early stage, uh, but just to set up expectations. Sync as, as it is, is not going to be improved any longer. OK. All right, thank you, Ibai. Um, next topic. Top contributors issue only shows nine instead of 10, and we have another person with 300 hopefuls. All right, I assume this is uh, the problem about the top 25 and top 10 contributor lists that we see that there are some people who appear in the, those lists without really having the right to be there. Uh, there were a few glitches. I don't know, um, Kadir, do you have any more insight on this? Because I thought this was solved. Because the last time I talked to Ricky, this was this was working fine. It seems that there are again some people who just appear in the top twenty-five, although they have like one question answered or something like that, and three hundred helpful rates. Kadir, you're on mute. I think. Thank you. Yes, I was muted indeed. Uh, so the last time we looked into this, there wasn't actually an issue or, or there wasn't a bug in the system. Uh, it was uh, counting correctly. It was that um, someone was uh, spamming, essentially, and um, actually quite sophisticated, was quite sophisticated and very manual. Um, so we, we, as far as I can remember, we deleted that user or we deactivated that user because, yeah. Um, so. I would have to look into this to see what's the case here if we have a bug in our system or whether someone is, again, uh, trying to exploit uh, the karma system to their own gains. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't quite know. Uh, I will look into this. Let's let's have a look into it, this together, Kadir, and we can put it as an action item for next week uh, to see exactly what is going on because it seems that there are like more people doing this and it's really strange because yeah. I don't understand how. Uh, and we will need Ricky as well. <clears throat> Um, because as I said, like last time well, I spoke to him, it, it was fine, so I don't know. So the thing is, uh, we already have a solution to this problem. It's called rate limiting, and it essentially limits people to, I don't know, like uh, 10 votes a day or something like that, something that normal people do. Uh, and with the rate limiting, it's, um, uh, it should be quite impossible or a lot harder to actually gain, uh, to, to, uh, game the system. The thing is that implementing uh, rate limiting is quite costly, so it will take us quite some time. Um, it needs to be implemented for each uh, action individually. Uh, we have listed all of those actions. We already know how long it would take. Uh, the thing is that uh, up until now, it's not been necessary because we could have dealt with all of those issues individually and it was kind of okay. Uh, so now if, you figure, if, if it turns out that people are actually exploiting this and it's um, taking time from our day-to-day uh, -day work, then we need to find an automated solution to this and we need to implement uh, the rate limiting. Uh, we can look into this this week and, and see if this is the case and if yes, then uh, in the next few sprints we can phase in uh, the rate limiting. Okay, and it's also a problem that it only shows nine people, it seems, uh, instead of ten, like the top ten, um, but we need to look into that. 
-hmm. but because uh, Tyler, you were writing to me, but that's only part of it. I mean, if you follow the thread, there are also complaints of about people gaming the system and getting there when they shouldn't be. Could, could I have a question? Kadir, is this yeah. is this also the rate limiting thing? Though this is also <clears throat> the kind of thing that would like we're seeing all kinds of craziness with votes on articles. That's a different kind of rate uh, limiting. No. Yeah, that is a different kind of okay. rate limiting. The issue there are bots, um, and um, uh, we would have to deal with it in a different way. So we already have different um, uh, look. So it's it's part of what I want to talk about in the um, uh, in the metrics section. Okay. But essentially, we are we need to rethink how we are filtering uh, votes and stuff like that. That comes in great quantities. So with the votes, we have like several ten thousand, sometimes a hundred thousand votes per day. Uh, so we need to do a different kind of filtering there. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Kadir. Let's move on. Uh, Troubleshooting information. Sumo development update. John 99 has a lot of things to ask about Sumo development. So not sure if we can actually have time to go through everything. Uh, maybe it's better, Kadir, if we could just have a look at it and then we can follow up with it. it is this about the add-on thing, which I kind of only vaguely know about? I was wondering if someone could explain this thing. Yeah, um, so I, I saw the thread in the support forum but since I've been on PTO, uh, I've been trying to catch up with a lot of stuff, so I didn't get to this yet. Um, uh, John, so if, if you are listening into this, um, we have data about the usage for that. Um, it, it's stuff that we need to work on. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, very few people are actually using the add-on. So essentially, just to give, an, uh, give a context to this, um, uh, the issue that we have in the forums is that oftentimes we want to have information uh, that we have to ask for, um, and it, that's wasteful. Uh, it means that sometimes someone from our contributors has to ask for that, and then we have to explain how to get more data, and then it's a back and forth, and that takes a lot of time, and also a lot of people drop off in the in the process. So to streamline all of that, uh, Tyler actually I think uh, uh, pushed forward a project, uh, a very helpful project, uh, an add-on. That would essentially you would you you click only on a button after installing that add-on, and it automatically puts in. Um, okay, uh, yeah. So just to give context to this, um, and it automatically puts in uh, the troubleshooting information during the ask a question process. So uh, the the stuff that you have changed in your browser, the um, change preferences, I think. Um, extensions that you've installed, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so the, the thing that are actually in the troubleshooting pro, uh, window that we ask you to include. When we looked into this before, a very, very uh, few number of people, a uh, very, lo very low number of people actually uh, ever included that information. Uh, so we wanted to streamline this, and we have this add-on now, and it's in the ask a question process, so you install the add-on, one click, and you click on the button, I want to have this in, include this information, and um, it's all there. Uh, so that's what this is about, and I will answer uh, any further information about this in the thread um, because it's complicated. Uh, it would take a, a lot of time here. And Just for additional context, we're hoping at some point that this is something we can bake into the browser and just use a whitelisting system so that people right. won't even have to install the add-on. Right. Uh, this, this is, yeah. So one thing, David, uh, I, I, I do recognize the fact that we have two people who uh, may or may not have all the context for all of the discussions that are happening. So uh, Patrick and Hermina, if you're, if any of this is confusing and you feel like the, it's you know, way too confusing, then, then don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, just just so, so that you know that you're invited to, to break in any time. Sure. Um, but... I, we had implemented something similar uh, into the Steam client, and I think it's a great idea to uh, having the add-on there is great, but to, to bake it into the browser so it's something that the user can easily just say, oh, include all this information to make my experience more helpful. Um, I think that's a great idea. 
and for me it's just totally confusing at the moment so uh, <laughs> i'll try to clarify it after the meeting maybe in the, you know one to one with michelle or with modelina and find out more yeah, you, afterwards you're sort of starting at the the opposite end in some ways by joining this meeting because this meeting is very contextual very uh you know specific so um yeah it might be it might be overwhelming almost to to sit into one of these meetings because we're talk we're we're so used to be talking about this every week so we forget about the fact that there are some people who may or may not have all the background but but again don't hesitate to ask questions but um also you know obviously there are links i think this discussion has a link so you there are some opportunities to to um explore and read uh mm -hmm. offline too yeah, and don't worry, everything will make sense at a certain point. <laughs> it will take a while to make sense. Right. Okay. So next one is, uh, I want to touch upon that very quickly, um, uh, from John about the post-mortem. Um, so we, we had a glitch, uh, I think it was Tuesday last week. Um, there was an issue when, we, uh, when, when uh, one of our database engineers uh, um, worked on the infrastructure that Kitsune is running on. Uh, there was a two-hour window, two hour window where uh, we lost uh, some data um, and uh, also there was a glitch uh, which meant that um, uh, posts that were posted by user A were attributed to user B. Um, so there was a glitch. Uh, as, far as, I, as, as far as as we can tell, about 40 posts in total could have been affected. Um, the total, the number of affected are probably even lower, um, but we don't know yet uh, what actually caused uh, this issue. We we just know that it's it's fixed uh, and it's not happening anymore. Uh, our database engineer has been um, out of office uh, um, last week, so I'm talking to her today to figure out the root cause of this and make sure that if we can avoid this make sure that this is not happening in the future. As far as we can tell, so far it's been a freak accident uh, that should not have happened at all, but uh, no system is 100% um, perfect. So uh, that's what's been happening. Uh, as far as we, can, as we can tell, we have lost uh, one revision in the KB forum. We have uh, lost, uh, I think, two uh, posts in the discussion forum. A support forum, and we have uh, misattributed uh, uh, um, less than a dozen uh, support forum uh, messages. That's where we are right now. And as far as the KB one, it was a single character change, which I had seen that existed, but and then it disappeared. So I went and redid it. It was a simple thing. Yeah. So hopefully the impact of this was limited, but we want to make sure that. Uh, we never lose data, uh, we never lose user, user input, and we want to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, I will hopefully have more information next week. Okay, um, I have added an action item for you to like, look, on, look into all of yeah. these. And then... There's more information in the uh, thread that John linked to uh, where I explained this in more detail what happened and, and uh, what the effects of this were. Okay, cool. Thank you, Kadir. Uh, another question from Vito. Briefing on the support stats project. What was done? What is still open? No, <laughs> I want. Uh, first of all, I hope you hear me. I'm not sure, but uh, yes. Raise can. your hand and okay. Uh, I I want to brief you on how things are going or not going. And first of all, I would like to thank Kadir for very excruciating hour with me on on online and. Uh, uh, the background, uh, the idea is to have a quantitative analysis of transactions that uh, support uh, uh, people are doing, uh, that's uh, localization, questions, etc. In, in other words, to quantify how active anybody is. And uh, uh, of course, that's all available, but uh, very deep in the uh, treasure boxes in the foot docks of Mountain View, and uh, somebody has to have access to that uh, additional to uh, to Chen, of course. And uh, I raised my hand, uh, Matt. I think it was the, not the last century, but the last year, I guess. You know, 
and uh, so far we got that far that I, I can get on VPN to a Mountain View. But uh, I don't have the password and the user. I don't know the right password and the user to get in the, to the next door. And uh, somebody has to check uh, my records in Mountain View to see uh, what rights I do have and what not. And uh, uh, I'll come back next week or next week, so hopefully with some more news. You know, eventually the idea is to have uh, some uh, SQL scripts to go through the activities of the last quarter or whatever the time period would be and then to have some uh, sound objective idea who's been doing what, how much, okay. Uh, that's about it for tonight and Kadir, um, I owe you a beer, one for the time being, but there'll be some more coming, I'm afraid. <laughs> no worries. It's, it's a pleasure, uh, Vito. And uh, I can promise you, we will get you online. We will get you on that server, even if it takes okay, a little I bit longer. But we will I, do that. I want to be useful, and uh, sometimes it's pretty frustrating, you know, because you just want to get the data, and thank God it's so, so much isolated that not every dude can get in into that treasure trove you know so that's good you know but uh pity i am the one that has to breach the wall you know but uh you are helping me and thank you guys yes I know and, uh, greetings you, uh... to the new faces by the way okay that so was Cheng, it okay Cheng thank sent you a reply to that email Vito, about the uh, password and um if that doesn't help just uh, ping me so chang's out of pocket for mobile world okay. congress so uh just shoot me an email and i'll see if i can shake something loose for you. Uh, a little background i work uh two, two jobs before it's nine, seven o'clock european time so i didn't have time i had no time to check the mail but i appreciate great Chen is uh, one of the best uh, when it comes to feedback. Just pass it on, you know. Okay, thank you. Hey, Vito, uh, you're the man, and and I, I mean that in all the right ways. So uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for uh, okay. enduring this this this. Um, uh, I have test. a short <laughs> apology for my Twitter that I deleted in uh, ten second, ten minutes later, you know. It was stupid, but uh, everybody's got an ego, even Vito, you know, so uh, it's back to, the, why, to normal now. To that's why I replied to it, Vito, because, uh, it, uh, it, yeah, because my answer it. still stands, regardless of uh, what Vito yeah. was responding. Anyway. Uh, we'll have another beer on this one sometime. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys, and take care. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Thank Have you, fun. Vito. Bye. All right, moving on. Uh, next topic again the middle contributors article have already talked about that um so there's no need to go through it again please do join that uh, thread there about uh, about this and join the discussion so okay, i'm sorry manalina so just yeah. to clarify because it's sitting in the review queue so we're not we're gonna not have this article we're just gonna update the meet the team page okay. exactly so we're not going to have another separate article on this Everything will be included in the meet the team. Okay. Because we're all the team. Sounds good. Okay. Um, moving on, Firefox desktop. Uh, Philip has a question. Any updates if there is a fix in the Pi for Firefox 19 crash or Windows 8? Yeah, so we're working with uh, AMD on that right now. And there may be a 1901 specifically for Windows 8 to address that. But uh, we'll keep you posted. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. I see that. Was it you who answered the question here? Or was uh, it that was Tyler. That Tyler. Okay, great. So you have everything there. Cool. Moving on. Firefox for Android. Roland. I saw he left to go to another meeting or something. Roland dropped off. Um, there's nothing dramatic going on with Firefox for Android. There's a startup crash if you update from Firefox 18 to 19 that we're digging into. Um, and the solution for that is to uninstall and reinstall Firefox on your Android. Uh, basically, it's the database gets locked during the update and that causes a crash once you uh, restart to open up 19. Um, but other than that, there's nothing major going on and that startup crash isn't affecting that many users, so. 
Okay. Great stuff. Thanks, Tyler. Okay, let's move on to Firefox OS. I guess there are not really a lot of updates there, uh, as <coughs> everybody knows. Uh, loads of people are the, at the Mobile Congress right now in Barcelona, so we're waiting for them to come back and, and give us loads and loads of updates. I think it will be very, very interesting. Well, I, and also to add to that, there are, of course, a bunch of updates this week in terms of Google Firefox OS, and you will find thousands of articles. So that's that's basically if you if you want an update about Firefox OS, you uh, search the internet. You don't have to Google. You can Bing or you can do whatever whatever floats your boat. Uh, it, there's there's just a, a shitload of positive news right now. So I couldn't be more excited. But but given our team, uh, you know, obviously the biggest news are Patrick and uh, Hermina, which we've already talked about. So, and uh, so Michelle is uh, at MWC together with Chang. I don't know, Ralph, if you have anything to add, though. No. <laughs> Short and sweet. Yep, I love that. Okay. okay. <laughs> we can move on. Um, metrics. Uh, yeah. Just let me post this in here. All right. So there are a number of things. Uh, let me start at the top. Uh, what I just mentioned was that we have a large number of votes, um, like uh, up to like eight times. Normally we have like 10, 20,000 votes a day, and there are days where we have 100,000 votes that are mostly created by bots or essentially only created by bots. Uh, we can kind of isolate them. I link to the bug, uh, and you can. Um, we will. I will update that bug uh, with more information as far as, as as soon as I get them. And tomorrow I'm talking to Ricky about how to sanitize uh, the data that we have already. And we will also need to talk about moving forward if it makes sense for us to filter the data on our end uh, and do all of the work, or if it would be if it would be better to use Google Analytics and let them filter the data and just use the output from there. Uh, so I assume that the discussion uh, about that will go on in that bug. Uh, but at least the sanitation of the data that we already have uh, is also going to happen, and um, that's also going to be documented there. So for now, um, at least for the last week, um, you have to be careful about reading the helpful uh, metrics um, because they're heavily skewed. Uh, that's the first one. Uh, the second one was uh, just a second. The keep uh, the CTR. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, the CTR about uh, the jump in uh, fixed rate by uh, ten percent. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Uh, so that was just a spike. That was a. a um, a momentary thing. There was a one-day thing, so it spiked and it went back again. Uh, I haven't looked into that uh, further. I don't know exactly why that happened. Uh, I would have to look into the logs to be able to say what caused that spike. Um, there are there are a number of uh, different issues that we uh, usually see, like when someone links to a page, or when someone links to directly to search results or something like that. So when when those are external events. Uh, then we see spikes that last for a day or two. We also see that in the helpful votes, um, when when it's linked from a, a, a major news site, then the helpful votes go up a lot, but only for a day, and then they go back again. So usually those are um, effects that are triggered triggered by external sites or external effects. Uh, but I will look into this to make sure that it's nothing that uh, we caused, or to at least figure out what the source of this is. So an extra item for me. Okay. And so everything else, I think we already covered, right? Uh, let me have a look. Um, yeah, yes, these are uh, the next one we are going to look into and see if we need to do, uh, activate rate limiting. Um, and the other one is how many and what percentage of users are using the troubleshooting information. And I just added. 
um, the graph that I had created for this uh, so you can see it for yourself what's going on currently. So why did that way drop off? Like, Do you see how the end of the graph goes way down? Yeah. What, why is that? Uh, yeah, that's after we activated the uh, add-on, and um, so we used to have kind of uh, some kind of inf information in there or instructions in there. We don't have them anymore because we streamlined the process. But as you can see, people don't quite uh, uh, understand how to use the add-on or are scared that uh, maybe uh, they would uh, give up more information than they want to for for whatever reason. Um, it's actually currently locking more people than, than it's helping. And oh, that's something that we need to look into got it. because of that. So we know that this is the right way to go. The right way is to automate this as much as possible, uh, telling people how to access this, how to copy this into the clipboard, and how to paste this into this box is not the right way forward. This needs to be automated. But this first iteration wasn't quite it. So we need to work on that. Um, but this is the right, right direction. And just, I mean, you're seeing the percentages there. This, this is just tiny. Like, um, even before uh, we had this add on, only a very, very small amount of users ever put in uh, helpful information into that uh, troubleshooting box. Uh, so, this is more dramatic than it actually looks like. Uh, so, the error, margin of error here is actually quite big, um, but it's not shown. Okay, great. Thank you, Kadir. Um, Let's move on. Uh, community updates. There's a question related to the body program posted by Andrew. Uh, Andrew Rosanna is still away. She will be back on Wednesday and we'll, uh, we'll have another meeting then with everything you need to know about the body program. So do not worry. Okay, uh, let's move on to knowledge base, Michael. So there's a thing here about the share template at the bottom of most articles and it isn't documented and there's a reason why it's not documented because so so here's the deal just background for everybody there's a little template at the bottom of an article and it it adds it has a space to add a, a Mozilla short link um, it's it's not an automated process you have to add the template to each article you have to go create a short link for that article um, but to create a short link for the article, you have to have the credentials to log into the corporate Bitly account. Um, and it's a, there's no documented process for getting those credentials. Swarnarva did it. I don't even know who he talked to and who gave him a login uh, to it. Um, I just said to him, oh, you need credentials for that. And he went, oh, okay. And he went off and found somebody to do it. So, um, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what to document there. I, I, I mean, I can document about how it would work if you had credentials. There's a certain way to make the bit.ly link. You have to leave out the, the locale string, for instance, uh, so you get the right kind of uh, link that'll work for all locales. Um, so it sounds like you're saying that you're blocked on figuring out how to get the access, and maybe the key there is to talk to Shvornova. How did he get the access, and is that possible for other people to get? In which case, uh, this would be helpful for 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 people to right. I don't to provide these links. I don't know even who controls. I think that's a user engagement thing. The, the account. Yeah, I'm guessing that Shvornova knows since he got the the permissions. Yeah. He would know. So it sounds like the next step is just to ask him. Uh, what else? Um, there's a link there to a contributor uh, forum thread about uh, writing mobile articles and making people apprentice viewers. So the short version is um, as an experiment to see if being a reviewer uh, encourages more people to write so that um, essentially you can write and review the things that you, you can self-approve the things that you've written. Um, um, if that encourages more people to take on writing Firefox OS and Android articles, uh, we thought this was a, a safe place to experiment like this. Uh, Firefox OS has no users. Um, uh, Firefox for Android has few users. Um, 
So um, it's all detailed there, but um, basically the idea is if you're interested and you're not a reviewer, go edit five things and ping me and I will make you a reviewer. And then 99% uh, of all anything mobile is beyond our threshold of like, really has to have a discussion or another reviewer review it kind of thing. So you can go to town and write some articles, update <clears throat> things, add things that you think should be added. John99 asked in a forum thread, uh, mobile articles, Android, what needs to be done? I mean, other than the needs changes list, there's nothing listed anywhere publicly. It's a matter of look at the articles and see if there's something to improve that you think you can add or make better. Uh, is That's the idea. Yeah, Same it, thing with Firefox OS. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's like there are, there are, Firefox there are OS, did you know how to silence the calls? Is that documented? No, write an article like that, you know. Yeah. That should be a task. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you, Michael. Um, moving on to the support forum. Uh, there's a question there by Alice asking how should moderators deal with the direct links to exec executable files and if we should have a guide for moderators. All right, I can answer half of the questions. Uh, questions. So yes, I think we should have a guide for moderators and yes, I think we should talk about it. I'm not sure yet how we should deal with the exact file yet, but I see that there's a thread going on. So let's talk about it on the thread because I, like my first answer would be no, we should not post those. But, yeah, let's see what the arguments uh, around it are. Um, so, we'll, I'll see you on the, on the thread, and if anybody else from the from staff wants to participate in that one, please do. Uh, but yes, we will talk about having a guide for moderators, definitely. Yes, Michael. I yeah. was just going to say, I'll just add it to the thread. Just. Uh, in the past, when even we tried to have a support article linked to uh, an EXE file, it's a big can of worms. Security really doesn't like that, would not like us to, to do that kind of thing. As a user, I wouldn't click on a link uh, to an EXE file. But. Yeah, those are my con concerns as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm inclined to say, no, we shouldn't do it. But let's see. We need to listen to our community first. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is there's a new Sumo Day this Thursday. So everybody who has a bit of time, please try to answer as many questions as you can on the support form this Thursday. And let's try to do again the 100% that we've done before. Uh, right now we're around 95%. So just a tiny bit 5% that we need to catch on. So let's do it. Uh, and I think that sums it up. Oh my God. And we're all like only five minutes to go. <laughs> oh my God. Indeed. <laughs> we were efficient. What? So any late questions, concerns in the last five minutes that we still have? One, two, three, four, five. No. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for another great meeting. Yes, David, you want to say something? And con I, I was just going to say congrats to Patrick and Hermina for surviving the first uh, Sumo community meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Probably one of the longest that. ones in a, in a long time, too. So good job, guys. Uh, we'll have, have a great week, one. everyone. Thank you, guys. Have a great week. Great week. Bye. Bye.